Is he on now? Well. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm ready to take any kind of questions you may have. immigrants that came with their parents and weren't able to make the choice. Yeah, I think that dreamers are Americans. Um, I think that we have a long history in our nation of, of having open arms, of bringing people in. This is the only country that they've known. And we should be treating them as if that's the case. Um, they can be contributing to our society. We should be integrating and become, you know, seeing that back and forth with each other as much as possible. Um, their kids are going to be here. They will be Americans. We're all going to be one big giant melting pot. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, case in point, right here. Backtracking <laughs> just a little bit. How do you think you did with the with the debate? Is this your first time debating? Is, were there little nerves for you? I thought this was fantastic. I thought it was great. It was so nice to, uh, you know, formally meet uh, uh, John Curtis and, and see, the, you know, what he's all about uh, up close and personal. Um, I think we did great. I think I got the points across that I was trying to talk about. Hey, can we go over here, hon? Can we? Con, con Lala? Sorry. Uh, I think trying to get those points across that were, that were, I think, were the most important, which is critiquing the system that we're looking at, that there are alternative ways of looking at things, and that I bring a fresh new perspective to that, being a millennial, being a sociology professor, and living in, in Utah. What do you think your biggest difference was tonight with uh, Representative Curtis? I think you know, the, the things that I find that we, we share are, are some of those values that, that are, are, are really important. The things that I think make us different is our entire philosophy about what the role of government is. For me, the role of government is to make sure that we have the right kinds of public resources to make sure we have individual prosperous lives. From all the data that I look at as a social scientist, um, when I see that strong social safety nets are in place for the majority of the population that we see those kinds of things happening. And I hope I, I, I got that point across. Is there a particular issue or uh, anything that you want voters to take away from tonight's debate? Yeah, I think that uh, it's important to see how much I care about um, our environment. Um, I think that uh, we can debate some of these smaller things all we want till we're blue in the face, but unless we take the, the climate cl crisis seriously, none of the things that we are talking about to date really matter. Uh, the UN talked about 2040 being the year um, where we cannot turn back. Um, if I wait to be as old as my opponent, who's, who's 20 years my senior, if I wait that long to get into Congress, it will be too late to do anything about it. That is why I think it is important that people look at uh, where I'm at with my positions and my ideas about how to make our, our climate better for us in perpetuity. Yeah. One of the topics that wasn't mentioned in tonight's debate that I'm kind of surprised wasn't brought up was public lands. Yeah. Can you kind of give us your perspective on that? Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, that was the, the impetus for why I decided to run was because of public lands. Um, I mentioned in the debate that, um, you know, as indigenous peoples, we'd, we'd already given up so much. And yet, when Bears Ears came about, you know, it was finally like, hey, we've got the compromise. This is great. We can share this with everyone. And then getting that kind of thrown in our face, like, no, you haven't compromised enough. And I think that's the wrong way to look at it. We see Bears Ears as sacred land. It is the place of emergence. And I've compared this to, to, to folks who are of the prominent religion, which I'm also a part of. We see places like uh, Jackson County, Missouri, as that place of origin of the Garden of Eden. And I ask, what part of that would you like to have opened to oil or gas extraction? And the question is, we wouldn't want that. And so when we talk about our public lands, we do need to make sure that we're taking into account those stakeholders, but also making sure that the stakeholders who have been um, oppressed or have been uh, pushed down for so long, that those voices are, are elevated. And that's not happening in our public lands debate so far. You haven't done very well in the polling that we've seen. Yeah. Um, why do you think Thanks your message? Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> what, but why do you think your message hasn't resonated with voters in, in the uh, third district? Um, you know, I think it's 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 the the process by which those polls are being done. Um, the people that I've talked to have been overwhelmingly uh, receptive to it when we get to talk to them. Um, uh, when we look at some of that polling data as a social scientist, I was asking, "What's your response rate?" 
Uh, tell me who you're, who, you're, who you're polling. Tell me the confidence interval. None of those things were ever explained to me. As a social scientist, if I were to do that, that would be considered junk science and it wouldn't be able to go forward. The things that I've been talking about when I, when I, when I mention these things to people, um, I think uh, as more people hear about it, um, the more that they get on board with the things I'm about. Another... I do think. I think the, the, they put us at like 13%. As the recent one, I think we'll probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that we will be closer to you know 24, 25 percent in the polling. Uh, there's no reason to think that we would be any less than any other kind of election in the past. Another question on immigration: um, What do you think should be done at the borders, and should we have sanctuary cities or not? I'm sorry. Can you say that one more time? Should we have sanctuary cities or not? Um, I wish we could have a sanctuary nation. I think that uh, when we look at, at the border, uh, we need to make sure that we keep that secure from people who would wish to do us harm. Um, immigrants who come here are not wishing to do us harm. They are coming, they are willing to work, they're willing to integrate, they're willing to become the best entrepreneurs of our society, and they're willing to take care of their families back in their home countries. These are the most hardworking, loyal, uh, some of the best people we've ever seen is the opposite of what President Trump is talking about. And I think that we need to be, yes, looking at our border for security, but once they're in the nation, we need to be making sure that we document them that we can be able to pull them out of the shadows so that they can become, uh, really experience the full uh, rights of what it means to, to live in this country. Yeah. Okay, so moving forward, you have a couple weeks ahead of you. How, yeah. do you. how do you win this? You know, the window for us, we know, is pretty small. Um, when we gotta climb a mountain to get up there. And I think as, if there's anything about my character and being an indigenous person is that the odds don't matter is that we push as hard as we can and we hope for the best. We, there's a saying that we say is we shall remain and this is the first of many. I think um, um, as people look at the person and not the party, that I'm not against uh, the president, I'm not running against him, I'm running against John Curtis, that they'll see that uh, if they want the best choice for, for this district, that I can be that person who can bridge the different kinds of things that we see from, from when it comes to age groups, when it comes to political affiliations, when it comes to indigenous and, and Anglo relations. I can be that conduit to serve Utah best. Anything we haven't asked you that you want us to know? <laughs> what about my favorite color? No. <laughs> Turquoise, turquoise, okay. No, I think, I think we're fine. Hay algo que puedo decir en español para la gente? Okay. Uh, puedo decirles a todos que están allí que pueden votar, por favor, es tan importante que nosotros um, uh, elevemos las voces que tenemos. Uh, es importante que nosotros estamos involucrados en nuestro país y, y también participar en este método que es la democracia. Gracias por estar acá en nuestro país y ser nuestros vecinos. ¿Quieres explicar algo de inmigración, lo que me explicaste en inglés? Sí. Eh. Parte de la inmigración que, que, yo, que, que yo dije antes es que yo creo que la gente que están viniendo acá ya son am americanos o estadounidenses futuros. Y debemos tener nuestros brazos abiertos para venir y, y ser parte de nuestro país, nuestra so sociedad. Muy bien. Y nada más este, para terminar, si me puedes... Decir un poco de tu pasado, de dónde vienes. Sí, sí. sí. Cuéntame un poco de ti. Sí, sí. Bueno, yo soy indígena de uh, indígena de abajo. Mi, mi familia es de Arizona, um, pero yo vivía acá en, en Lago Solado, Salt Lake. Uh, mi esposa es de Venezuela. Epa, Chama está aquí. Entonces, mi familia, parte de ser indígena, también tengo una familia inmigrante. Muy bien, genial. Muchísimas gracias. Gracias, gracias. Okay. Thank you to everyone. And vote for me. Vote for me. Come on. <laughs>